All right, so you might need to type in some of these characters. I don't know if you know them, but I put together a really funky one. So for me, for the Rappaport role as what, uh, Paul? Someone uh, mouthy, someone slightly immature. I have Carlos Santos. So he's 34, but he's in, and he's also, but he's in Gentified. <laughs> he's in Gentified uh-huh. and he's in uh, Vacation Friends. And he's right. really funny. He's kind of a motor mouth. He kind of plays – I could see him just idealizing something else and still being likable. So Carlos Santos, nice. that's mine. I, I thought you would have – I thought the obvious choice here was Pete Davidson, but that's an equally good choice. Well, we were joking around. Pete Davidson already made this movie. <laughs> the King of Staten Island? Yeah, he's been in Arrested <laughs> Development for so long. Actually, he stayed in his hometown. But, yeah, he's been in – like. I, you know, right, I, he still lives with his mom, right? Yeah, I wanted to open up the market to somebody else. And have them okay. have it. So my you can't you can't let him corner the market on those roles. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome. you know, like he, you know, like Pete Davidson is another guy in Arrested Development. So uh, <laughs> next, I would have as Birdman Dylan. This is controversial, but I want to go a different type of character, and I'm gonna say Alexander Ludwig from Vikings. I don't know if you've seen him before. He's like a real interesting pick. Yeah, so big. He's like six four, six five. He could easily play like a football player that made it big, but then blew out his knee, and so now he's right. back home. So I, I think he's a good actor too. So I well, love to with see a name like that. Alexander Ludwig, Ludwig, you'd have to be a large person. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can't be a small person. Yeah, dude's yeah. huge. And then I have uh, wait, as wait, Willie. Wait, so can I, can I ask something about yeah. real quick? I'm wondering. You went with size. I would have gone with brooding. I would have gone with like a Kit Harrington. But just from Game of Thrones, someone who's mastered the brood. But just wa- imagine watching Kit Harrington snowplow. Like I don't want to watch that. He's too good looking, I guess, to snowplow. But yeah, it's um his brooding is so much deeper than Matt Dillon's. Matt Dillon has an everyday brooding. Kit Harrington's is like an all world brooding. Like like the whole universe rests on his shoulders. Exactly. Matt Dillon just kind of yeah. has a. <laughs> like, I get it. You know what? It's you. You can't. John Snow, he gets sent to the wall. It's cold. Like he, he's a bastard. Like that's that that's Kit Harrington heavy. brooding. Not Pompeii. like I have my own company yeah. and I'm still, you know, I have a beautiful girlfriend. Yeah. And like I'm, <laughs> exactly. So like I'm just kind of miserable. Like it's, you know, I'm not I'm not as cool as I used to be. Like the, the two two wildly different broods. Good point. Good so, point. Like I, Kid Harrington in this would just suck the like it, a portal would form and just suck the movie into itself. It would go from a, a dramedy to just a straight up horror movie. <laughs> or I don't want to be here anymore. Then. Yeah, just get me out of this. So yeah, that, that you don't you can't have his type of brooding in this movie. You need an everyday brooding. I didn't realize there's so many layers to brooding. I mean, like right, like you got the Gosling brood, but Gosling brood is more like mysterious. Is there an actor out there that says less words per scene than Ryan Gosling? That's a great question. John Krasinski in Quiet Place? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you know in sports how they analyze productivity per minute on the floor? Like oh, yeah. Ryan Gosling, wor- words, per, words per scene. That's efficiency funny. words per scene. Oh, man. Good lead. That's funny. Like efficiency. As far as dialogue, yeah, he's up there, number one for sure. That's funny, like an RBI. He words found this per minute. corner of the universe where he's an actor, but he found a way to say the least amount of lines. Like I got, it's really minute. impressive. Yeah, I like that one because I mean, First Man, Only God Forgives, Drive. Well, you have to memorize all that stuff for the movies. So if you can do less <laughs> less words to memorize, the better. I would not want to do a Ryan Reynolds movie. Which is which is the one where Ryan Reynolds fought the angel of death and he said like three lines of the whole movie. Ryan Reynolds fought the angel of no, death. No, uh, no, uh, Ryan Gosling, where he says want to fight. Oh, only God forgives. What a beautiful movie. Yeah, but he didn't have a lot of lines in that one either. Mm-mm. That want to fight line was awesome. He just walked up to a god, want to fight, and he just gets schnockered. Oh, I love it. That's a good movie. That's a great looking movie. I mean, I don't recommend it to people because they would hate me, but. I love it. That, that one hurt my soul after you recommended it. It's not It's not for the faint of heart. But it's just the colors in it and the themes. Like he, 
this is a guy who still has some hope left in him, but his family's like sucking it away from him. Like he's in utter depravity and he still, I feel like he still has somewhat of a soul left and just, I don't know the, the look of the movie. Oh man. They had to go do an appearance and get paid like $500,000 to go finish this movie. Cause they didn't have enough money to finish it. Only God forgives. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's art. I so, think that movie's art. All right. This is going to so be a Timothy weird Hutton. Uh, Okay. I don't know if you've watched like yesterday or did you watch Avenue five on HBO? Did you watch Tenet? Negative. No. Uh, so there's a guy named uh, Himesh Patel, who he played Ooh. a musician in Yesterday. He like the guy who covers all the Beatles. But I think uh -huh. he would be a great Hutton. Like he could really pull off the likable, horribly self-absorbed human being. A little squirrely, but a little handsome at the same time. Yeah, and I like, I think he could do it. Show up in that jacket. Like I think he would be really good. Okay, nice so, pick. All right, so then I'm going to do for Mo the Emmerich role, I'm going to cast Dylan O'Brien from The Maze Runner. Because if you watch Love and Monsters, he's just the nicest kid. So you could see him with a family married kid, but nice. then throwing down. So I got that. Just and perfectly then, content. Just content in his life. For Kev, the Max Perlick, I have Eller Coltrane just because I'm a boyhood fan. And so I want to see that kid get more <laughs> roles. Just a side role. I think he could be super likable. Playing along with that. For the uh, Andera role, uh, who played Uma Thurman, I, I put uh, Isaac Gonzalez. Because mm -hmm. I think Bloodshot, I love that movie. <laughs> so, and Baby Driver. So, it, so is she, so she's beautiful. Is she approachable and, and incredibly cool as well? Well, I mean, that's like the character in Bloodshot. That's the character in like yeah, a few other point. movies. So I, I think she could nail that. So I'm nice giving her pick, that. Man. For Darian, I'm going Cara Delevingne. She would have to be a little bit better written, but uh -huh. that kind of character. And then I was thinking, for Marty, I was thinking uh, Catherine Newton, who I don't know if you've seen um, uh, Freaky or the Map of Tiny Perfect Things. Yes, I have. I love but, the Map of Tiny Perfect Things. But you could get her playing like a freshman in college who's like 18, coming home from break. And yeah. then so we're rewriting the movie to to turn Marty's character into a freshman in college. Yeah. It, the idea does not that idea falls apart. Like yeah. if if I was a dad, I would murder. I would not murder. I would pick that dude up and throw him into the lake. Like I would, you know what I mean? Like dude. yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. He was in the clearly in the wrong there. And he was <laughs> risking physical harm on upon himself. And I'm not saying. Event. And I'm not saying this is right either. But I do think it's a little bit more. Whether he's like, you know, I could wait for you to get out of college, and they're like, nah. Like this, they could have a good witty conversation. Which I think, and she's cool, like, in, in Freaky, she's cool, Map of Tiny Perfect thing, she's cool, she's in the, um, uh, she was in Blockers, she can be funny, I think she could pull it off. Like, in Map of Tiny Perfect thing, she was cool, so I think she could pull right. that off. I was thinking that Zendaya could do this, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, she'd be great. Like, a 18-year-old, 19-year-old in college. And then, I guess, I don't know, Kat Graham as, as the Mira character, because she's in a Christmas movie on Netflix with Ludwig and they're really good together. So you might as well just put them back together. Is she kind of mercurial? Yeah. Super nice. Like really great. Okay. Cause nice Nero was kind of mercurial. She has some things she was dealing with too. So then give her that. And then I was thinking for the Martha Plimpton role, Jan, like Haley Steinfeld. Cause oh, she could, fun. Yeah. Cause she, she would, I would love to see her with Carlos Santos, like the two of them yelling at each other. Like she's in full true grit mode and he's in full like gentrified mode. They're just talking really fast and, you know, going at each other. So I think right. that would be oh, nice pick. I think that would be a good cast. So I love this cast that I've come up with. I see it. I see it in my head, and that's that's important. And if I didn't, that'd be weird. But I could see this cast. Could you produce together. this movie? Could you produce it? I mean, yeah. I mean, it, could you would... write the script? <sighs> no. No. Okay. I can't carry that dialogue, man. I don't want to write for the. I, I want to write monster movies. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write. I'll write a monster movie. Or a sci-fi movie. I, I can't. Did you ever finish Squid Lake? <sighs> Did I ever finish Squid Lake? No, I never finished that. I finished the vampire script, and I have a couple that I'm working on that are cool. I'm just too busy. But too busy. But yeah, the vampire one was fun. I had a bunch of ideas. Like they weren't. Good. I had an idea. Like I had an idea. Like a say anything idea. But I was like a young idiot kid, and I thought it was like provocative. And now I look back at it, I'm like, woof. So yeah, I would not want to write this movie. I would hire. Who would I hire? Who could write this movie? Let's see. Um, I don't know. I'd hire Sandra O oh to direct it. 
I feel like she could get it. And whoever writes Killing Eve. Sejo. Wait, who writes Killing Eve? Uh, oh, what's her name? I don't even think she would want to write this. But she came in for Bondry rights. I don't know. Who wrote Crazy Rich Asians? I think whoever did that could do anything. Oh, yeah. That's a good script. Yeah. Let, let that whole team do it. Let, let uh, uh, the director of Crazy Rich Asians come in. Let him direct it. Boom. Done. And I'll say, we, we brought up Henry Golding, but he's like 34. I wouldn't buy him at a 10-year high school reunion. Would you? No, he, he's just too good looking and, and too sophisticated. That <laughs> I, I don't think I, I could Henry Golding to any other role that is not very sophisticated and polished. I don't know if I would believe it or not. All right. John M. Chu directs it. I like that. John M. Chu. And then Adele okay. Lim, she wrote Crazy Rich Asians, Raya and the Last Dragon. Yeah. You know what? Let her do that. And what else has she written? Yeah, she did Raya. She's written like Lethal Weapon, the TV show. Life Unexpected. She wrote One Tree Hill. Yeah, she'd be great. Life on Mars. She would nail it. Do that. I think she's worked with Rosenberg before. The writer from this. So yeah, there we go. We got our, we got, we got that's our a cast. good cast. Yeah, Scott Rosenberg developed it so he could let her write it. Mark, you really connected a lot of dots here. Yeah, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> we can make this happen. I did not intend for this to happen, but it did. So, yeah, that's it right there. I like it. That's it. That's my cast. I think it's a good cast. I think people would like this movie. I like it. Got anything else like, for me here? Maybe the. I think they would, but. It, the 90s was just so specific. I mean, they have to completely reimagine it for the anxiety of today. Yeah, I mean, definitely more phones. No, no, like, you couldn't just leave somebody and be like, hey, I won't talk to you for two weeks. I mean, you could still make it a period right. piece. I mean, I, but you still, I mean, look how many Hallmark movies are made where people travel back home. That's the plot of every Hallmark movie. So just, you could still do this. They travel. Everyone travels. To go, no, that doesn't work. That's a good point because most of the, all the Hallmark movies involve going home in some fashion. Yeah, so just it's and it still works. You know, make one of them the same a Christmas formula shop. every time. Yeah, like a, a Birdman owns a Christmas shop. <laughs> Turn this into a musical. Oh man, wait, you got I got some singers in here. Why not? Do you? I, I mean, uh, Haley Steinfeld, she's a singer. Right. You know, this movie had a really good soundtrack. To oh, it. yeah. Do you remember how in the 90s, how they picked actual songs to correspond with the movie? Batman you remember, remember when soundtracks were a, were a really big thing? Oh, is that the Kiss from the Rose by a Rose on the Grave song came out? That that song had so many people. Or Aerosmith, it. Armageddon, Will Smith. Cable with, Guy soundtrack? Uh, remember that? Remember the Crow soundtrack? Right. The Crow is probably one of the best soundtracks. But that's the 90s where they put so much thought into it. Mm-hmm. So they had a lot of piano playing in the background, too, in a lot of the tender scenes in this movie. But the soundtrack was, was right on the money. It really complemented all the scenes. I mean, you had Neil Diamond. You had Chris Isaac. That's, like, perfect for a beautiful girls movie. But yeah, I, was good. I, miss, I miss soundtracks like this. Even opened up with a song called, what is it, Beautiful Girl. That's very it's literal. Very, <laughs> someone was researching that. They're like, I have to find a song it's a <laughs> that matches the day. title. I'm just going to go out and make songs. I, I remember I, I, I was joking around one day. Like I wanted to start a band that just sings sports anthems. So like strike them out. Like the, like the, the pop rock. Like, yeah. Like, but like, and, like a pop rock anthem band who just does like arena rock songs about sports. Like we play baseball, strike them out. Like just the most like horribly novel songs that you could play during a baseball game. So you're like Andrew WK for sports. Like, yeah, when it's all, time to party, we will party hard. Yeah, when it's time to play baseball, we will play baseball hard. Just like every, the name of the band's called Sports, and we just do a theme for each album, like Ace, your aces, tennis, like just the, the whole, tennis anthem. Hope you just of, play it while people are trying to play tennis. No, hope like, I one can't of them catches off. Right? I would, I would just do the most cynical jams. I would hope, like, I would do, I would do a Christmas album. Santa's flying overhead. Yada, All you yada, need yada, is yada. one hit. Exactly. Just one hit. Set for life. <laughs> but I want to call the band Sports. But I was already in the Brewskies, so we didn't do it. <laughs> That'd be a funny band, just Sports. Sports or Sporks? Sports. 
S P O R T S, and we just sing sports anthems <laughs> with the Z. <laughs> sports like jock jams, <laughs> like dun 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 dun. <laughs>